Hi, and welcome to Get In Roll. On this DVD, there are several great free rigs available to use. These are the ones I'm using, and you can use them too. They're even completely open source. But what if you'd like to use your own characters? This tutorial will help you get your own character ready for animation. While in-depth rigging is out of the scope of this DVD, I'll explain how to transfer a ready-made rig to your own character. We'll go through a few easy steps to get your own creation ready for animation. Here I've modeled the character. We'll call him Jim. Jim doesn't have any bones yet, so what we'll do is we'll steal the ones from Biped Rig, Nathan's nice and simple rig that's easy to modify. To make sure your model is compatible with the biped rig, you'll need to model it so that the arms stick out to the side and the palms of his hands face down, just like you can see they do here. The first thing we'll need to do is that we need to make a duplicate of the biped rig file. I'll select it and make a duplicate. We can call this jimrig.blend. Next we'll open it up. And now we can append our Jim character. Locate your character file and select your object. Here I've called him Jim. Click append. The first thing you'll notice is that Jim is a little larger than the biped rig. So we'll just scale him down a little bit and make him fit. All right. Once we have him roughly the right size, we'll just need to also center him a little bit. So we'll just grab him and make sure he's right in the middle. like so. And now just to make the view a little clearer for us, we'll just uh, get rid of the underlying green uh, mesh character that we're not going to use anymore. So I'll select all the body parts and move them to the last layer here. Now we can view just our new character and the skeleton. The next thing you'll notice is that the skeleton is proportioned differently from our gym character. So go to edit mode of the skeleton and enable all the layers with bones in them, the one with dark dots over here. And now we'll scale the underlying skeleton to fit our own character. So I'll select the arms here and they're too short for our character so we'll just scale them out and make them a little bigger. The same with the hands, they're also too small, so I'll just make those bigger as well. Move the thumb so that it fits the thumb of our character. And also do the same for the entire hand and the finger bones as well. That's better. I'll also just move the shoulders up a little bit and adjust the head and neck so that they also fit uh, the larger head of our character here in this case. It's also a good idea to move the spine back into the body. That'll make the deformations a little nicer. And here the knee is also a little bit out of place. I'll just adjust that taking these two bones and moving them down just a little bit. Now comes the foot. There's a lot of bones in the foot because it has some complicated mechanisms, but what you want to make sure is that the toe bone fits the toe area of the foot. So I'll put it roughly here and move both toes back inside the foot of our character. 
We also need the top of the foot here to, to match with our mesh, so we'll move that down a little bit. And also the heel, this uh, represents the heel, and we'll put that right at the heel. We also need our, our uh, legs are further apart, so we'll just adjust that. And the same with the feet. All right, I'll just make some final adjustments to the foot rig here. Before we continue, we'll disable shapes for a moment, because for the binding of the mesh to the armature to work well, you have to make sure that all the bones are actually inside the mesh and they don't stick out. So for example, here we have the shoulders, we'll just put them inside. Just check your whole character and make sure that all the bones are inside him. All right, now we're ready to assign the mesh to the underlying bones. Select the armature and hit N for numerics. And if you hover the cursor over the object field, you can press Control C and copy that name because we'll refer to it in a minute. Now select the mesh and go to modifiers and we'll add the armature modifier. You'll need to make sure that the armature modifier is above the smoothing subsurf modifier so that the evaluation of the bones happens before. So we'll just move it up by clicking here. And now we can paste the name of the rig into this field. So we'll hit Control V and paste in rig. And then to make sure that the mesh follows the correct bones, enter pose mode then select the mesh and enter weight paint mode and now if you go to the paint menu you can choose apply heat weights to vertex groups we'll just disable some of the bone layers so that we only have the first layer visible because these are the bones that actually affect the mesh now when we go back to the mesh and select weight paint mode we'll be able to right click on any limb or any part of the body and you'll see how that bone affects the surrounding mesh parts. And as you can see, the computer does a pretty good job of assigning the correct bone weights. You might want to adjust some things, however. For example, here the neck is influencing too much of the head and we don't want that. So to fix that we'll go to the paint menu and pull the weighting all the way down also select mirroring and just start painting. So now we're removing influence from the neck on the face. Now to make the effect stronger, we can disable vertex distance, which will make it much quicker to just paint away everything. And sometimes you can also just enter the mesh and see things from the other side. It helps you just get a better view of what's inside the mouth here. All right, then we'll select the head and do the opposite. So we'll increase the weighting here and just paint back the red on the face so that it's affecting the whole head completely. Just make sure that the teeth will also move with the head and paint them completely red. All right, jolly good. And now you can see if we select the armature, with this little work, you can already start to pose your character and move it around, and the results should look fairly good.
There are a few other things we need to adjust though. So if you go to IK mode and then select this bone on his heel and rotate that, you'll see that the foot roll doesn't quite work because his foot is a lot smaller than the original biped rig. So we'll fix that by selecting the last layer with bones on them and select the heel bone here move over to the constraints and select options under the foot roll script and then select the length of the heel bone that you're using on your model mine is 0 0.13 and now you'll see that the foot roll works a lot better also do the same on the other side Next, we'll need to give our character group a sensible name. So instead of biped rig, I'll call him Jim rig. And we also need to include the mesh into that group. So select the mesh by right clicking on it and hit control G on the keyboard. And then select add to existing group. Select Jim rig. Next, we'll just delete the original mesh that came with the rig file. We don't need that anymore. Hit X. And now, you're ready to pose your character and do whatever you want with it. It's so much more rewarding to animate using a character that you've designed yourself. And because we've used the biped rig as a base, you'll see that the rig mechanics work quite well. We have the foot roll and we can switch from IK to FK. Now, of course, what we haven't done is to add facial controls on the face here. This is a little more advanced, and it requires you to set up so-called drivers so that you can change the shape of the mesh as the bones move around. So here I'm making the arm bulge as I move the bone around. For more information on facial rigging, check out Bassam's cool rigging DVD, or also look on more tutorials on the web. Now I hope that you have your own character ready for animation. Thanks.